Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here, Game From Scratch, and I imagine if you're a sci-fi lover, you have read Neuromancer or Snow Crash or uh, various other apps, Ready Player One, you know, and basically from the point that there was an internet and there was 3D, people always thought, okay, we need to make this into cyberspace. And there have been a number of attempts over time, and since then, we've also got things like virtual reality and augmented reality devices, and we have more and more powerful 3D in the web browser, so it's no doubt inevitable people are going to create VR frameworks that run in the browser, and that is exactly what A-Frame is all about. It's sort of like VRML, if you remember way back, like 20 years ago when they tried to make 3D work in the browser. This is a successor to that. Now, this is built on top of the 3JS open source 3D framework, and it is a, I guess I mentioned, it's kind of a, an HTML syntax and an anti-component system built over top for providing a 90 hertz a VR friendly in the browser experience. And you can see here is one of the examples running in the background and you can see that the VR inspiration is definitely there the whole uh, metaverse feel is there but there's a number of different whoa I'm stuck a number of different uh, examples here you can jump in and check out for example here is a virtual snow globe uh, I'm obviously running them in my uh, browser not with any VR headset hooked up being an idea of the kind of things that you can do in the browser using a frame now this was an originally a project started by Mozilla back in I I think it was 2015. And since then, a number of other people have contributed towards it. I think there's something like 200 contributors now. And the 1.0 release was just announced. So um, if you want to check it out, it's available at aframe.io. A quick aside, from an aesthetics point of view, this has to be the ugliest choice of colors I have ever seen in my life. This blue and this salmon color together really kind of make my eyes want to bleed. That's uh, just my personal bit of feedback. This is hideous. I don't know if you can share the same opinion, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. What you're going to probably want to come here for is either the examples that are available over here or the docs right here. And the cool thing about me jumping into the docs right now is I can sort of illustrate how things would work. So here's a hello world example. And you can see you can actually remix and play with it on the fly, but you're dealing with straight up HTML type syntax. So you see here we've got the body of our web page, and then within we've got a scene tag. And in the scene, we've got primitives such as a box, sphere, cylinder, and plane. And at the same time, you can bring in your own content. You can bring in 3D models, etc. But your scene is composed just like you would expect from HTML. And this is why it reminds me so much of VRML. VRML back in the day, before ironically VR actually existed, uh, it had uh, it, it had a very similar syntax feel. It's just it was so far ahead of the. Um, the, t the time of the day. Uh, the other cool thing is there's a handy built-in visual 3D inspector. Uh, so if you're in a scene, you can have it come up and show you all of the, the scenes and entities. You can, you can edit things on the fly. It's sort of like a mini built-in editor. Kind of showcase, I think that would be here so I can open up the visual inspector right here. And you see you've got control over all of the things that are composing. So we got this blimp up here. I can select the, the entity, the blimp, it's got sounds attached to it, a camera attached to it, there's the blimp entity right here, and then over here you've got editing for that entity. Now there seems to be something missing. Uh, you've got the various different components that you can define yourself and add in, uh, but yeah, we seem to be bugging out a bit with the uh, the inspector on my version, but you get an idea of exactly what the inspector is all about, and that is embedded directly in a frame application. So you get this mini editor built in, which is kind of cool. Uh, if you're interested in checking it out, everything is really well documented. So all of the pieces that are involved, all the various different entities that they've defined, uh, the component model. So if you want to extend it yourself, uh, details here for how to bring in your own 3D objects. 3D objects can come in the form of OBJ files or uh, GLTF, you probably recommend to do GLTF because the OBJ format is very limited, but most major 3D content creation tools do support JLTF. There's also a couple of web IDEs out there that can output an A-frame HTML scene if you want to do authoring in those. So that's definitely kind of cool. So back to the 1.0 release. Here I am over on the release notes from GitHub. You can see the major things here are as we got the WebR spec support was added. Uh, we've got WebXR gamepad module added, so you've got controller support for the HTC Vive, the Daydream, the Oculus Rift, the Rift S, the Rift, uh, sorry, the Go, the Quest, uh, the Microsoft Mixed Reality devices, and the Vive Focus. And we've got experimental uh, WebXR augmented reality mode, a new VR and AR, uh, new Enter VR and Enter AR icons. Um, and we got Quest controller support. Uh, there's an option to set 72 megahertz mode on the Oculus browser for the Quest. I don't know, 72 megahertz for VR. 
might make your eyes kind of hurt. I wonder if that gives you a headache, but I'd be interested to find out. Uh, fall back to WebVR and Oculus browser, permissions dialog on iOS 13, and it updated to 3JS release 111. So once again, 3JS is the underlying framework powering all of this. So if you are interested in checking out A-Frame, it is available up on GitHub. Uh, you will notice it is under the MIT license. Um, yeah, so that, that is essentially... It, uh, that is the idea behind A-Frame. It's an interesting project. Um, I don't know that VR took off the way that we thought it would, but I do think that eventually virtual reality, 3D, and in the web is going to be the future. I, I think at some point in time, we are going to probably stop looking at web pages and jump into a 3D world. I just don't know if this is that future. I don't know if we're there yet. And I think in some ways, it will probably be augmented reality that wins it. Some kind of a, a projected display on your glasses, something like Google lenses that aren't lame. Uh, I, I think that's where we'll ultimately move towards in the future, uh, not these sealed off VR type headsets. But I do think that there is an element of futurism in this. Is there a lot of real use for it right now? Eh, it's questionable in that regard. You can definitely use it for creating uh, web-based VR experiences. I'm just not sure that there's a lot of people out there actually consuming web-based VR and augmented reality experiences. But I'd be interested to know if I am just in the wrong here. Do you have a VR headset? And if so, are you doing a lot of web-based 3D stuff? out there. Uh, I'd be really interested in hearing if in the comments down below. But anyways, that is it. That is A-Frame. The um, is a very interesting, let me just get rid of that ugly ass scene, a very interesting uh, browser-based AR and VR headset that, or uh, sorry, framework that just hit version 1.0.0. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.